Today, I'm going to be going continuing to be continuing. my topic on hepatitis. So we're going to pick up with hepatitis C. So hepatitis C is known as the silent epidemic, and I'm going to talk about that as well as its transmission. There's a common thread between hepatitis C patients and the reason why the virus has been called the silent epidemic. Most people who have the virus don't even know they're infected. The Centers for Disease Control say that it is a case for at least 50% of those that are infected with hepatitis C. It is a sneaky virus and most people don't know, what, know they have it again. Hepatitis C virus is usually spread when the blood from an infected person enters the body of someone who isn't infected. Nowadays, most people are infected with hepatitis C through sharing needles or other equipment to prepare or inject drugs. However, before 1992, hepatitis C was also commonly spread through blood transfusions and organ transplants as screening for the virus had not yet been implemented. It is important to know that hepatitis C is not spread through such activities as hugging, sharing, eating utensils, breastfeeding, holding hands, coughing, or sneezing. The development of hepatitis C symptoms. If a person becomes infected, it is possible that it takes two to 12 weeks for symptoms to be developed. In some cases, a person might feel fatigued or depressed, but don't attribute these things to being infected with hepatitis C. They may have a fever higher than 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 37.8 centigrade. Fatigue, and then not just regular fatigue, but long lasting, reduce their energy, motivation, concentration, and is relieved by rest. Abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, joint pains. Um, and the reason why they have the joint pains in some cases, sore joints, often in the hands, ankles, and wrists, and occasionally in other areas is caused by the production of cause of what's called cryoglobulins. If you think you have been exposed to hepatitis C virus, the hepatitis C virus antibody blood test may show detectable levels as well. And here are just some of the common symptoms that I discussed earlier. Chronic hepatitis C symptoms, because there's an acute phase and there's a chronic phase. In long-term chronic hepatitis C infection, the liver can become more damaged and subsequently decrease in function. There are often still a lack of symptoms, but for some symptoms can surface or existing ones can become worse. Newer worsening symptoms may include brain fog, mental confusion, or lack of mental clarity, bleeding easily, bruising easily, dark colored urine, stool that is pale, clay light gray, or putty colored, pruritus, itchy skin, swelling in the legs, peripheral neuropathy, jaundice, and ascites, just to name a few. Central hepatitis C for men and women. Both men and women can become infected with hepatitis C, although the virus affects men in the United States more often than women. Also, women are more likely to clear the virus spontaneously than men. These symptoms of hepatitis C, if present, are the same for both men and women. However, women who do experience symptoms may ignore them, thinking that they are caused by something else, such as anemia or menopause. Liver disease progresses more slowly for women with hepatitis C than for men although the progression of liver disease changes as women age. Postmenopausal women having lost the protective effects of estrogen have increased rates of liver fibrosis over women still in their rep reproductive years. While hepatitis C can affect both men and women, women living with hepatitis C have different issues to contend with than men. Just a reminder. People at the highest risk for hepatitis C, current or former inje injection drug users, those born between 1945 and 1965, recipients of clotting factors concentrates made before 1987, when less advanced methods for manufacturing those products were used, recipients of blood transfusion or solid organ transplants prior to July 1992, hemodialysis patients, people with known exposures to hepatitis C viruses, such as healthcare workers, recipients of blood and organs, from donor who tested positive hepatitis C virus naturally, people who are HIV positive, children born to mothers infected with hepatitis C, people who are incarcerated, people who use intranasal drugs, and people who receive body piercing or tattoos done with non-sterile instruments. Hepatitis C infection that continues over many years can cause significant complications. Scarring of the liver, 
liver cancer and liver failure. This is what the liver cancer would look like. And over here, or your sorry, the liver. Is hepatitis C treatable? It is possible for hepatitis C to go away without treatment. However, of all people who contract hepatitis C, often 50% or less will have a self-limited case in which their immune system defeats the virus. It has not been established exactly why this happens. Individuals who have been diagnosed with chronic hepatitis C can be treated with various combinations of medications. The type of treatment as well as the length of treatment of hepatitis C depends on the genotype of the virus. Working closely with one's physician and using an open line of communication will help in determining the best course of action. There is no vaccine to prevent hepatitis C. Let's talk about hepatitis D. Hepatitis D is a liver infection you can get if you have hepatitis B. It can cause serious symptoms that can lead to lifelong liver damage and even death. It's sometimes called hepatitis delta virus. Although it's, it's common in the United States here where I live, hepatitis D, D virus is most severe form of hepatitis. Over time, it can lead to liver cancer or liver failure. What causes hepatitis D? You can get hepatitis D if you come into contact with blood or bodily fluid or someone who's sick with it. Yet it can infect you only if you have hepatitis B. The hepatitis B D virus needs the hepatitis B strain to survive. This can happen two ways, co-infection or superinfection. Co-infection, you can contract hepatitis B virus and hepatitis D at the same time. Superinfection, you can get sick with, hep with hepatitis B first, then later come down with hepatitis D. This is the most common way to get hepatitis D. Risk factors, your odds of getting hepatitis D go up. If you have, again, hepatitis B, inject with drugs, have sex with someone who has hepatitis B or D, have HIV and hepatitis B, or a man who has sex with another man. How is hepatitis D transmitted? As touched earlier, having sex with someone who has the virus, sharing needles, touching open sores of someone who has the virus, get a needle stick that has been in contact with an infected person, and sharing personal items like razors or toothbrushes that may have touched an infected person's blood. It's rare, but mothers can also give hepatitis D virus to their babies during birth. The signs, yelling of the skin and eyes, jaundice. Most of these that I've talked about have talked about the skin. Stomach upset, pain in the belly, throwing up, fatigue, not feeling hungry, joint pain, dark urine and light colored soup. If you already have hepatitis B, hepatitis D virus can make your symptoms even worse. Treatment for hepatitis D. There's no cure yet for hepatitis D virus. Until doctors come up with better options, the drug prescribed most often is called pegylated interferon alpha, PEG IFNA. It doesn't work well for everyone. It can also cause many side effects like lack of energy, weight loss, flu-like symptoms, and mental health issues like depression. Doctors aren't sure how long treatment for HDV can last. Persons may need to take this medication for a year. If a blood test still shows a certain amount of the virus in the body, the doctor may suggest that that individual stay on the PEG IFNA for up to one more year. PEG IFNA is often able to clear HDV virus for most people who have a co-infection. If someone has a super infection, the virus is less likely to go away. This person may need to learn to manage HDV and HBV as lifelong conditions. In summary, everyone should be screened at least once for hepatitis C infection. It is a simple blood test that could provide life-changing information about your health. Risky behaviors such as intravenous drug use put you at a high risk. But when overall infection rates are high and many people don't know they're infected, it is not, it is, it is not impossible for anyone to have the virus. The good news is that hepatitis C is curable. You can prevent insignificant liver damage by catching and treating the infection earlier than later. Don't wait for symptoms, which may never occur or may only occur when it's too late. Knowledge is power. And even with advanced liver disease, there are steps you can take to control the damage and preserve your liver. Hepatitis D or Delta virus is a defective single-stranded RNA virus requiring the presence of hepatitis B virus for its expression and replication. HDB has a worldwide distribution. It is, it is endemic in the developing world. 
HDV infection is limited to patients who have HBV infection, and like hepatitis B, is acquired parentally. Infection with HDV produces more severe acute illnesses than HBV alone and carries a higher risk of for full fulminant hepatite, hep hepatic failure, I'm sorry, which occurs in 5% to 20% of cases. The chance of progression to cirrhosis is higher in patients with Delta hepatitis than in patients solely with hepatitis B, as is the risk for hepatocellular carcinoma. Delta hepatitis can be prevented by vaccination against hepatitis B. I wanna give special acknowledgement to the Cleveland Clinic, the Mayo Clinic, CDC, World Health Organization, Mount Sinai Hospital, and Medline for the information that I've provided to you. I hope this was helpful. Please feel free to join me in Zoom right after service if you have any questions or anything related to your health you'd like to ask me, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much for your time, your attention. God bless, and enjoy the rest of your day.